Welcome to a special edition of One on One. On this second part of the two-part edition with the erudite Professor Wale Shoenka, we would be unreservedly tackling the topical issues of the day. We touch on the professor's irrepressible hopes for Nigeria in the face of a global crisis against the realism of this same nation's limitations. We consider whether his years of activism have led to any regrets. And we even get personal, delving into any aspect of family life that may have departed from his original script. Precisely what you do when you have a rare quality session with a figure who is otherwise difficult to pin down. Stick around for this enriching session. I am Ekene Ezeji. There's a statement you made that the greatest threat to freedom is the absence of criticism. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of thinking, how do you get our leaders to be more sensitive to what concerns us you know even during this pandemic people are being critical of the elites as they see them mm -hmm. you know in terms of still looking out for themselves what does the average person do beyond getting worked up mm -hmm. uh, to engage our leaders to be more sensitive to our needs in italy during the migration uh, um, the wave when the disasters began if you saw the funeral which was given to our nigerian uh, people you know by the mayor of the time where their bodies were washed up, the solemn, the respect which is given to these illegal immigrants who died and washed up their shores. Even I was contacted because they wanted to use lines of my poetry to carve on the, on the tombstone. I said, these are human beings. These are other human beings. By contrast, a mass funeral was taking place here and somebody in government said, this is just Nollywood. You see, a pattern has been set. Is that kind of pattern makes people distrust governments? So that even when they are taking the correct steps, suspicion is aroused. What are you up to? What's behind this? What's this game? Why are you suddenly waking up to the concerns of people? You never expressed it at that time. On the contrary, you came and robbed salt in the wound of these people. Questions, purely rhetorical questions like, if you're capable of locking down the state, locking people in, why haven't you locked in cattle? This time, decree that cattle should stay put where they are until the herdsmen learned to behave, until that virus of violence is cured. You stay right where you are, and we're going to send up drones to make sure that you do, etc., etc. even if you have no drones. You know, it's all... So it's, it's a combination of so many things. Little, little things like that, big things, like, the, again, the kind of uh, fight between the DSA, the, um, Mr. Mangunu, okay. and the chief of staff of the government, in which one side, head of security, more or less, you know, in Thailand, is fighting the... Um, the the chief mm -hmm. staff officer ordering counter orders and they're supposed to be a leader right there and this goes on in the media for quite a while nothing happens they say what sort of a government is this where is the government where is the leader where is he is he all right is he conscious of what's going on does he understand what this means for the citizens and uh, critics and so on, they're not persistent. They don't pick up these clues and fasten onto them and act on them. You know, you know they wait until Walesho, if Walesho Yaka hasn't spoken, then that means he's with them. That means they're incapable of doing anything. So the same thing with the legislators. Many times they're taking us for a ride. I'm here only, you know, some of the time, as you know very well. But even if I we're here all the time, where are they? Where are they? Why do they drop, you know, uh, assaults on our human dignity so easily? And move away from um, legislators. Move away from government. There are cases of human violation within the citizenry itself. And you wonder, what's become of this case? And when I was in the university, and I was teaching in the university, the same problem. One gets exhausted. Same government, you'll have these cults, secret cults, 
whose members have either thrown acid on uh, a woman who rejected the advances or gang raped individuals. I was in the security department. You know, they always put me there because they know the way I feel about these things. You know. And I know what measures we took to deal with some of these miscreants, you know, who said should be treated as criminal adults. So we're not talking merely of government, we're not talking of the various tiers of government, we're talking about humanity itself. Something is dead, something has gone wrong with the humanity of this nation. And if this COVID doesn't teach us to look for that missing element in our lives, I'm sorry, we're doomed as a people. With that, we're going to go on a brief break. Um, I'm, I'm following your, your thoughts and yeah. thinking more about the humanity. And I think you made a statement earlier, I heard you say, bringing back humanity to our civilization. So we're yeah. going to carry on with that when we come back after this brief break. <laughs>